Perhaps you haven't been drawing or painting as often as you'd like, or perhaps life has simply gotten in the way and you haven't been able to find the time to pick up a pencil in a few weeks or months, or perhaps for one reason or another, you gave up on art some time ago. But there's a little voice inside saying, maybe, just maybe, it can be a part of your life again. I hope that this video helps you give that little voice a big hug. I recently came back to art after around five months of not touching a pencil. And even prior to that break, I already was drawing very sporadically. I had already stopped making YouTube videos many months before that. I wasn't working on my projects. I struggled with inspiration and motivation and had just not been in the flow or in love with making art for a very long time. And all of that just sort of culminated in that five month dead zone of essentially abandoning art altogether. And during that time, I even considered quitting permanently. It was my first time in nearly a decade of being an artist that I ever questioned if I should even be one. But it was probably the most important question I have ever asked myself as an artist. Because it was through finding the answer to that question and eventually making my way back and falling in love with art all over again that I learned the importance of mindset. The key for me so far for remaking art a part of my life in a healthy and positive and sustainable way has actually been to shift my mindset away from my art and how often I'm making it, and instead to focus my attention on creative flow, discovering it, understanding it, and catering to it. Ever since I've come back to art, that is where my mindset has been. And so far, it's put me in a place where art just happens and it's fun and fulfilling, just as art is supposed to be, and probably was for you at some point in your life. I'm working on an illustration for my forest animal calendar project. I started this project in 2021, but because of the uh, <coughs> existential crisis I was going through during that time, it just got delayed and delayed and delayed. But this is the year. <laughs> this is the year when I finish what I started. I'm feeling just so excited and good about art right now. And so my goal is to have all 12 animal illustrations done in time for a 2024 calendar. Creative flow is when a person feels totally in sync with their creative process. It's when you are focused and calm and creative and art seems to just flow out of you. A state of flow is something that all artists hope to achieve every single time they sit down to draw but often it can be a struggle to get there. And a part of that I think comes from the fact that when we talk about flow or the whole creative process, for the most part, we only focus on the physical aspect of moving paint on a canvas or scribbling graphite on a page. We give tips about drawing routines and drawing schedules as sort of a way of saying, hey, if you want to achieve a state of flow with your art, you just got to sit down with a pencil and a sketchbook and start drawing. There definitely is some truth in that, but it's really only half of the story. Here's the thing, making art and being in a creative flow does not start when you pick up a pencil and it does not end when you put it down for the day. To illustrate my point, just think of all the times you've had an idea pop into your head while you were doing the most random things. Laundry, cooking, exercising. How many times have you had an idea for a character, a story, painting, a video, a social media post? How many times have you watched a movie that just stayed with you, that filled you with inspiration, that made you want to make fan art, and then that fan art inspired you to create your own character? These little creative moments, these little sparks throughout our day, are just as vital to our ability to create as is the physical act of drawing. The two work together symbiotically to create flow. And I'm willing to bet that if you are having trouble getting yourself to sit down and draw, you're also having fewer and fewer of these creative, inspirational moments throughout your day. And if you think back to a time when you were drawing as much as you wanted to be, you were probably thinking about it constantly throughout your day. Your head was probably filled with illustration ideas that you wish your skills were good enough to make. 
And I'm also willing to bet that that time was back when you were pretty new at drawing because we all naturally start out in a state of flow. We all naturally start out finding meaning in our work, even if that meaning is something seemingly simple and silly. But then somewhere down the line, we convince ourselves not to. We tell ourselves that our art has to look a certain way, or serve a certain purpose, or take a certain amount of time. We get a creative spark, only to shut it down, thinking that it's not good enough. And it's through nothing but our own mindset and expectations that we clog up our flow until the spark stops showing and the sketchbook pages stay blank. The work we do with our hands is merely our means to express our stories. If we convince ourselves that we have no worthy stories to tell, our hands will be idle. As I'm drawing, I am actually listening to an art history podcast because as a self-taught artist, I never learned anything about art history. If I'm being quite honest, I didn't really care about it <laughs> for a very long time. I've always admired kitsch or popular art. I saw beauty in the way popular art is able to reach everybody in one way or another. And I saw the entire sort of more traditional fine art world to be kind of snooty. <laughs> I felt like so much of what is considered revered art is very ugly and I wasn't really willing to kind of give it a, a second consideration beyond the fact that it was ugly because I was saying well you guys are just making this important because you want it to be rather than because it deserves to be yeah I'm pretty harsh pretty harsh but it's really funny to that the more I adventure into the world of creation and the world of art, the more I just keep slowly sort of making my way into this realization that all of this, all this art, all these pretty pictures or ugly pictures, whether it's painting or video or writing, all it is is a means to share an idea with the world, or at least an audience who is willing to listen. And not every idea is pretty, and therefore not every art piece should be either. Personally, at least where I am right now with my art journey, I am still very happy saturating myself in my pretty kitsch art. All of my favorite artists are artists who make pretty art, but at least at this point in time, I am able to learn about art history and learn about these famous pieces and actually have some kind of an appreciation for them. Getting back into a creative flow means getting back in touch with your inner stories. And stories don't have to be something super complex. I'm not suggesting that every artwork, every sketch, needs to be super deep and chock full of meaning. I mean, look, I'm painting a cute, sleepy hedgehog here. Your inner stories are made up of all the things that make you uniquely you that end up showing through in your art, including the most basic of things, like your aesthetics. In an age of social media and being constantly bombarded with other people's opinions and worldviews and trends, it can be pretty easy to lose touch with even the simplest of things about ourselves like, what are my tastes? Which when we get down to it, is the basis that will define your art style and subject matter. As mentioned before, being an artist is so much more than just making marks on the surface. It's a way of seeing, of observing, of thinking, and just as your art style will become more unique over time, your way of observing and thinking like an artist will become unique to you as well. But just as we must train our art techniques through drawing exercises, we too must train our eyes and our brains to get in the habit of viewing the world around us and our everyday experiences as scrap material to turn into art. One great way to get started, which also happens to be pretty fun and easy, is by identifying and connecting with the things that you love, the things that feed your soul. What do you love to do other than art? What do you love to read, to watch, to listen to? Make it a part of your creative routine to immerse yourself in the things that you love and especially to explore and discover new ones. And one pretty important side tip to this is to keep these things to yourself, at least at first. 
The purpose of finding the things that you love is not just to indulge and entertain yourself, but rather to learn about yourself. Because as you find the things that you love, you will also find the things that you really don't like. <laughs> and while going on this journey of connecting or reconnecting with things that you love, you may be surprised by how many things you don't like that you have been allowing into your art practice. How many stylistic choices or subject matters you've been putting into your art in order to cater to trends or what sells or what you think other people will like, but you don't. Not truly. And the thing is, we can't ever really be truly motivated by things that other people like. We can appreciate it, we can be happy for them, but we're not going to be really motivated by it. We can only be truly motivated by things that we like, as decided by our inner voice. And your inner voice is often best heard when no other voices are present. Of course, we all want to share the things that we love, we want to share the new discoveries of cool things, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's basically what I do with my YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm sharing things that I love with the world here. But just always remember that whenever you share something with other people, you are letting in other voices, other opinions. And regardless if those opinions are positive or negative, it makes no difference. You're always running the same risk of clouding your own voice. Especially if you haven't yet decided for yourself whether or not you love something. Give yourself time to just be with yourself and to learn and to observe and really bond with the things that you like before you share them with others. So... I'm not really happy with this piece. It's not garbage, but not my favorite. I think I overworked it a lot and throughout the entire process, I just felt like I really didn't know what I was doing and was trying to remember how I painted the previous two pieces, but uh, it's totally all right. It's really just one of the consequences for leaving art for such a long time. You come back and you do forget certain things. You forget techniques, theories, procedures, the way that you used to draw. Even though I've been back to art for some time now, I am still feeling the aftermath of my five month hiatus, which was more of a, a year hiatus when it came to traditional painting. But you know what? Like, I'm just totally embracing it. You don't have to love every piece of art you make in order to love art and to have fun making art. I have nothing but love for that break I took. That time taught me so many things and I wouldn't have known it at the time, but it ultimately led me to a place where I have a deeper connection to art than ever before. So no matter where you are in your art journey, a big piece of advice would be to not have regrets. It doesn't matter when you started or how long you've been on a break. No two art journeys look the same. And learning isn't linear, improvement isn't linear. It's a two steps forward, one step back type of process. But ultimately, you're always learning and improving and becoming a better artist even if you don't realize it and sometimes even when you're not actively creating artworks. So just start from today, do what can be done today, and take things one day at a time. And the way I'm going to move forward with this here hedgehog is I think I am going to actually repaint it. Thankfully I always scan my sketches before I paint over them so that if anything goes wrong I can always I have a backup and like repaint it. I have never so far redone a piece, but I think I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to reprint out the sketch, transfer it, and then paint this whole thing again. But this piece might have to get... I'm kidding. I'm not going to tear up the piece. Come on. Come on. What am I, a TikTok star? From my experience, expectations are the biggest inhibitors for creativity. And moreover, expectations are illusions. 
our brain's attempt at predicting the future, predicting an outcome, predicting a reaction based on things that happened in the past. Expectations allow us to conceive plans and make reasonable, calculated decisions. They serve as a safety measure to stop us from wasting our time on bad decisions. But in reality, nothing in life comes out exactly as you expect. No painting will ever come out exactly as you picture it in your mind. No project will be without the unexpected bumps in the road. Let's get this hedgehog painted. Try number two. The only thing certain about expectations is that they most definitely will not be met, at least not to a T. And yet expectations are something that we all bear, especially as we grow older, because expectations come from experience. As we learn the process of creating a piece of art and we observe the reactions our art gets from the world, we remember and come to expect the same process and same reaction the next time we sit down to draw. We remember how how long it takes, we remember how many steps are involved, perhaps we remember which kind of paintings do better on social media. And we weigh all of this data, all of these expectations against the realities of how few hours there are in a day. And often this lures us into a trap, into a place of waiting waiting for that perfect, magical, inspiring idea that checks all the boxes and is worthy of all of the time and the effort it will take to make it. But of course, the idea never comes. And in our effort to not waste our time, we end up wasting all of it trying to think of a good enough idea. Expectations are the difference between the freely flowing creativity of a child and our inhibitions to do the same as an adult. It's a beautiful sunny day. Have some great daylight coming. One thing about doing this a second time is I don't really feel nervous. I mentioned in a previous video series, How to Find Your Spark, that I feel nervous every time I sit down to paint. And it's very true that this is the first time I'm actually repainting something. And I don't really feel nervous. I guess because nerves come from a place of fear, fear of messing up a painting. But if you've already screwed up, if you've already messed up the painting, then it's like you don't really have anything else to lose. <laughs> so you can just relax and just paint it again. And it's like, okay, well, if it comes out terrible again, that's just fine. Is this a secret? Have I unlocked a secret? Just paint everything twice so you can get rid of the nerves? I guess we'll have to see. One way to conquer an expectation is by replacing it with another. Every time you sit down to draw, you can expect to learn something, to discover something, to understand something a little bit deeper, and to add something to this existence. Let this blow your mind for a second. Every project, every painting, every sketch, every tiny little doodle is something that has never yet existed in the history of this world until you make it. And you are the only person in this world who can make it exactly the way that you do. How worthy of our time is that? The best idea is the one that you breathe life into. You make an idea worthy by putting your time and energy and effort into making it. making a couple of pairs of earrings. I've never really been much of a jewelry maker. I made a few little things here and there, but I had this bag of little tiny citrine crystal chips. I'm a bit of a fan of crystals and gemstones. And I also had these tiny little bottles. Oh, just for the longest time and I wasn't sure what to do with them and just had this epiphany that they would make a perfect pair of earrings because they're small enough to not be too heavy. And I've already made myself a pair which I have just been wearing every day. I think they are just so adorable. My studio is filled with little bits and bobs of things that are just waiting for a spark of inspiration. I am having some trouble with this ring. Come on here. Come on. 
get on there. I think living a creative life isn't limited to just one medium. It's a way of of sort of seeing everything as a potential for creation. And often creativity informs creativity. I think one of the biggest barriers to creating, to making things, is the why. You know, why am I doing this? Why am I making this? What's the point? I think as adults especially, we need to justify everything that we do. I think because we have so many things to do in our day that we feel we need to choose our time wisely. And that need for a reason before we start, I think is often one of the biggest blockages. I think focusing on flow, for me, it means embracing that doing it is a worthy reason. Because if you don't do it, if you don't make it, if you don't make this thing, it will never be made. Not this exact one. And you really don't know when something that you make is needed. So if you're, whenever you have this urge to create, seize it. <laughs> if you have the ability, if you have the time, even if it's a short amount of time, time is never wasted on things that you produce. I think time is only ever wasted on things that we consume, or rather things that we over consume, because a certain level of consumption is important. We learn from consumption. Not to mention we just need to relax sometimes. <laughs> like personally, I at the moment do not have any subscription services to uh, streaming like for shows and movies and stuff. And it's not because I don't love shows and movies, I, I do. And I have gotten a lot of inspiration from them over the years. But I find that when I over blast my brain with consuming, it all kind of gets lost. I don't have enough time to really digest everything that I've seen. It just kind of goes in one ear and comes out the other. So the proportion in which I consume versus I output, I create, it has to be a lot more output than consumption. But when I don't have a streaming service to sort of flip through, then I have to kind of very purposefully seek out the shows and the movies and the videos that I really want to watch. And I find when I do that, I appreciate the things I watch a lot more and I don't watch a lot of things that I don't like. <laughs> and besides, um, you know, streaming services can can be very expensive over time if you really do the calculations and I can put that towards my channel or sometimes into <laughs> buying little packs of gemstones. We all have our impulses, people. And I'm not suggesting that like people should cancel their subscriptions, like do the things that you like to do and embrace the things that you like. People are different and I mean, I probably will uh, subscribe to streaming services again at some point. It's really just to outline the importance of listening to yourself and to your body and to your mind and to your life and every part of your life. I mean, listen to your finances, listen to, you know, the needs of your family if you have one. I think my greatest inspiration and my flow has lied more in embracing my life rather than trying to create a artistic life, <laughs> you know, to kind of create this image of what an artist is supposed to look like, how often they should be drawing, and what tools they should have, where they should get their inspiration, what movies and films they should be watching, and instead to just be in the moment of myself, be in the moment of my life, and to recognize how the things that make it lonely or the things that make it different is really where my voice is going to lie in my art and that is needed and that is beautiful and so is yours the world needs the beautiful uniqueness of your life and your creative voice Your ideal creative flow may not look like what you've seen or heard on the internet. Personally, at the moment, I don't draw every day. I don't like to draw every day. <laughs> Unless it's for some kind of project, like a month-long daily drawing challenge. I'm very project-based at the moment. But when I'm not drawing, I am still doing something very creative every single day. Usually I'm editing a video or making products for my shop. And by the time I'm done with those things, I have all of this energy again to make a painting and the cycle kind of continues that way. Perhaps your flow lies in drawing for 
15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. Maybe it'll be to make one painting a week or a month or even a year. Keep an open mind. Embrace trial and error. Your creative flow will evolve and change as your life does. And sometimes you'll have to do some rediscovering, but you'll know when you found it because you will feel connected with your art. And it is incredibly exciting to discover what it looks like, to see it evolve and to see and feel the effects your creative flow has on your life and the life of others when you take the time to pay attention to it and to be the caretaker for it. Was seventeen. Close the door and bolt it shut. Cause you're the Within your aesthetics, your oddities, your likes and dislikes, your experiences, your childhood, your job, your family, all of the joy and the pain that has made you into who you are right now watching this video. Baby, don't be unforgiving. There is so much art in there waiting to be made. Art that nobody else can make because they're not you. You just need to let it flow from you. During my time away, I questioned whether or not I should be an artist. In the end, I never bothered to answer that question. Instead, I came back to art because I realized that there is still art for me to make that no one else can. And that is reason enough to be an artist. But I can see through the surface You're alone to hide your loneliness And I know cause you're an awful lot like me so baby, don't be unforgiving Cause I already have no sympathy for myself And darling, I'd be more than willing To put my cold heart in your hands and let it melt Brain dump journal thought thingy. I wish there was a way to send a letter to my younger self when she was struggling to find meaning in her work and wondering like what the hell the purpose was for everything. Let her know that she's gonna figure it out. Just, she's gonna figure it out. Lives change, needs change, but creativity is a friend we all have to help us understand ourselves and the world. And once she embraces it, once she embraces that, she'll find so much more than what she's looking for, or at least the first step in the journey too. Ah, oh, pretty deep, pretty deep. I don't even know if I understand what the frick I just said. <laughs> what does that mean? First step in the journey too, I mean, it sounds good. Maybe I should turn this into a video. Video note! Only you could understand what I have felt I put my cold heart in your hands and let it melt Thank you so much for supporting this channel with your time. If you'd like to support it further, consider giving a super thanks by hitting that little heart icon under this video. Donations are always put directly towards this channel, but of course, never any pressure. I would also super appreciate it if you checked out my art shop at sakura.com where you can get my books, stickers, prints, and other arty things. A few pairs of the citrine bottle earrings I made in this video are available, as well as a charm version. Citrine is said to bring prosperity and good fortune and abundance to the world which is something I think we could all use a bit more of in our lives. So I hope it does for you. I will be sharing the progress of my forest animal calendar project here on YouTube, so be sure to subscribe to follow along the journey and say hi in the comments below. I always love to hear from you. Until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!